On Sunday, Roger Federer beat Novak Djokovic in quite literally every measurable statistic that we track in professional tennis. Yet, he lost in almost five hours. How did this happen? Many people, even Federer fans, are saying he choked. Today, we dig deep, investigate, and find out the truth. Welcome to Coffee Break Tennis, and kill the music! In the post-Wimbledon 2019 period, there will be no music, no smiling, no laughter, and no joy for anyone, on this show at least. What? Is that too much? Mr. Goat says to put the music back on. Put the music back on. Maybe I went too far. Today on the show, I, and my hands here, have uh, many pages. I also have some junk That Craig O'Shaughnessy wrote up at the ATPTour.com. Of course, he is part of Djokovic's evil team, but we'll look at that later, maybe. But here, my own analysis. Yesterday, I rewatched. I did it for you so you wouldn't have to do it. And if you're a Joker face, just enjoy it. Just enjoy all of this. I rewatched the first tiebreaker, the third set tiebreaker, the fifth set tiebreaker, and yes, I even did painstaking analysis of every point of the eight serving game where Roger Federer went for not only his ninth game of the fifth set, but his ninth Wimbledon. It was a storybook, uh, fairy tale, picture perfect scenario that uh, didn't materialize despite being this close. Anyway, all right, fade the music out. So you get the gist. We're going to we're gonna be here a while and we're going to dive deep. So this show ain't for the faint of heart. This is some deep statistical analysis. Stroke by stroke. Get ready. This could be a long show. First off, put the, st- the stats on the screen of the match. Like I said, Federer beat Djokovic in literally every stat. Aces, 25 to 10. That's more than double. Double faults. Joker had nine. Like I predicted, Joker would have some t- untimely double faults. Many more double faults than Roger. Uh, not many more. But, well, 50% more. Nine double faults for Joker, six for Federer. First serve in, 63 to 62%. Federer gets 1% more first serve in. Not the biggest number, but it's still better for Roger. What is a big number is 5%. When you're winning more, 5% more on first or second serve for that matter, but especially first, that's a big number in tennis. Federer winning 79 to 74 on first serve, 51 to 47 on second. That's a big gap. And you'll see why in a moment. Because the greatest returner, you would say, all right, well, Djokovic won because the courts are very slow and he's the greatest returner of all time. And that was able to nullify the Federer serve. But Federer won many more points, almost 5% again. Federer won 4%, 36 of receiving points versus Djokovic's 32. That's 79 to 64 points if you break it down by the point. But screw that. What matters more is, like I said in the uh, Patron Saint podcast on Sunday night, If we had a magic ball and looked into the future, and I told you we can only see one stat, and that's breaks of serve. Because everyone, I saw comments before, I just hope Roger doesn't have this. I just hope Roger doesn't choke away all of his break point opportunities. We know that's been something that's really, it hurt hurt Roger this year when he lost to Sitsipas at the Australian Open. He had like 15 chances to break Sitsipas serve, and I think he only did it once or something like that. Of course, we know the history with Nadal. And that's why I made a confident prediction. I said, Federer is going to break Djokovic more than Djokovic breaks him. Just like he did to Rafa in the semifinal, I'm very confident that he's going to do this. Since the Tsitsipas match, Federer has been very good at converting break points. And if we could only see that stat the day before the match, everyone would bet their life on a Federer win. Their house, their family, whatever. Federer breaks seven times. Out of 13 chances, that's better than 54%. Very good for Federer. If I tell you Federer breaks seven times tomorrow, the day before the match, you're going to think Federer's going to win, no matter what. Maybe if we don't have the information of what Djokovic does, we'll say, well, what if Djokovic breaks eight? Well, he didn't. Out of eight chances, Djokovic has a 38% conversion rate. He breaks three. Seven to three. More than double. It makes no sense. How do you lose? Winners. This is the one stat Djokovic beats Federer in. He has 10 less unforced errors. He has 52 unforced errors. Federer, 62. 
That could cost you the match if you're Federer until you look at the winners. Djokovic, 54 winners. My, oh, my. Two more winners than he had unforced errors. Federer has two more winners, too. 32 more winners than unforced errors. He almost had 100 winners. 94. That's plus 40. Or plus 30 if we take the uh, if we put the unforced errors in. Plus 30? You don't lose with plus 30 winners to unforced errors differential over your opponent. That never happens. Total points won. We know Federer's done it before. He wins 218. Djokovic wins 204. We'll take this and... We will, as Roger Federer said at the uh, at the trophy ceremony, try to forget. No strings. So after I did that podcast, I thought about it for the rest of the night. I thought, how do you lose when you win every stat? And then I thought, what about the stats of the tie breaks? What if you just take what happened in the tie breaks only and break them down? So before we go through the tie breaks and try to figure out, did Roger Federer actually choke? Let's look at just the stats from the tie breaks. All right, so taking all three, and and just like the tie breaks went in succession, uh, Federer lost 7-5, then in the third set, 7-3, or 7-4, and then in the final set, 7-3. Each tie break got worse and worse for Roger. So trust me when I tell you, not just from the points, but statistically, Roger Federer really should have won that first set tiebreaker. That would have been the key to winning the match. But this is averaged together. We'll look at stats after each tiebreak when we go through each tiebreak. This is all three tiebreaks averaged together. Roger Federer, first serve in, 12 out of 16. If you told me in advance he would get 75% of his first serves in in all three tiebreaks he played, I would say, okay, he's got a pretty good chance to win. This is where things are not so good, and Joker looks more like the greatest returner of all time. First serve win percentage, 58% on Federer's first serve. That's pretty low for Roger Federer. Second serve, 62. That's his average for the year, which happens to be his best in his career. That number would make me feel much more confident. Return points won. This is where you know it's not going to go well. 18%. In three tiebreakers, Roger Federer only won three points on return out of 17. Winners, 11. Pretty good. Unforced errors, This is where it really is. There's two big stats that matter the most for this epic five-hour tennis match. Federer in tiebreakers, 15 unforced errors. Guess how many unforced errors Novak Djokovic has in three tiebreakers under the highest pressure. And you you have to praise and credit Novak Djokovic. Zero. Federer, 15 unforced errors in three tiebreakers. That's basically giving away two of them, and an extra point. Novak Djokovic, zero. (laughs) Uh, Forced errors. Now, another thing is Djokovic had no winners in the first two tiebreakers. Only in the fifth set tiebreaker, Djokovic finally hit two winners. Compare that to Federer with 11. Now, Djokovic did have four forced errors that were key. Four times, Djokovic was able to come up with a shot. It wasn't a winner, but it was so good, and from... Mainly, the biggest thing for me is such uncomfortable positions, as you'll see when we go through the tiebreakers. He was able to come up with four shots that were so good, Roger Federer could do nothing, except I think he put all four in the net. And you can't blame him. It was what I said Roger would do so well against Djokovic. Constantly, Roger would use that slice backhand to get Djokovic in these uncomfortable, really low positions, a lot of times kind of short in the court, where he would hit the ball up, Federer would be able to step in, crush it, go to net. But as Craig O'Shaughnessy points out in his uh, Brain Game Tennis Review over ATPTour.com, in the tiebreakers, there was very little Federer coming to net. Djokovic was able to play those points from the baseline on his terms, and Djokovic was uh, pretty dominant in baseline points as well as points that go beyond uh, nine shots. I think maybe by the third set tiebreaker, he was winning 70% of rallies that go beyond nine shots. Uh, Back to the stats. Djokovic, first serve in. 59%, 59%, 10 out of 17, and uh, I think most of those are in the, the fifth set. Djokovic didn't get a lot of first serves in. I mean, overall, 59% is not a bad number if you're going for a lot, and he must have won 80% of his first serve wins. That's a great number, 8 out of 10. And second serve, 6 out of 8, wins 75%. But 44% went on return. That's really good in the tie breaks. Forced errors, Roger only gave Djokovic one forced error. 
So now let's go through each thing and ask, did Roger choke? If you just look at that, all those unforced errors, what was it, 15? Yeah, two whole tie breaks given away, plus one extra error, one, one mini break. Let's call it a mini break to go into the final set tie break. That does sound a little choky. But how did the errors happen? And when, why, what were the circumstances? This is what we're going to do. First set tiebreaker. 0-0. Zero, zero. Roger Federer serves. A first serve up the middle. Return. Missed long. Almost an unforced error here for Djokovic. Of course, that's not how they track these things at Wimbledon. Mr. Wimbledon won't call that an unforced error. But this first serve up the middle, it doesn't hit the tee. It's not close enough to guarantee success for Roger Federer. But it, it, it's still a decent serve. It's not quite in that zone where it's in between at the body and up the line and gets crushed. It's in, you know, it's not in the strike zone, but it's not too far. So Djokovic jumping over there, usually you know, kind of lunging, not a full lunge, a baby lunge. For Djokovic, it was a makeable return. He misses it. Rogers up 1-0. 0-1, Djokovic serving. Misses his first serve. This first set tiebreak, like I said, I think Djokovic misses every first serve or makes only one. Roger really should have won this. Djokovic, a second serve up the tee. A big moment in this point. Federer's backhand slice, just the one I talked about he's going to use effectively here, gets a short forehand from Joker, which Federer steps in, rips a backhand cross court, gets a very short backhand on the stretch from Joker that barely goes past the service line slightly left of the middle of the court. Now, Federer's on the top of the screen at this point. So this isn't exactly the ball he got on the second match point, but it's pretty similar. And you could compare both these moments and say they're a bit choky. I won't say Roger Federer choked here, but he was way too careful with these forehands. Federer hits this uh, short ball cross court with forehand very carefully. Djokovic is there, hits a mishit forehand that floats high into the baseline. Federer makes that ball to the Joker backhand, then goes for a much riskier inside end forehand from the baseline. Unforced error, Federer. I wouldn't call it a choke, but obviously he got nervous and was too careful. One all. Second serve, body, forehand side. Roger gets out of the way and hits a good four. This is a thing. Djokovic used the body serve. Craig O'Shaughnessy as he talks about it, how Djokovic was so successful with the body serve. But honestly, most of the time, Roger Federer came up with very good returns considering how good these body serves were. I was kind of shocked how well Roger would fight these serves off and then get into a neutral position in the rally. He, he escaped the danger, and then almost every time, he just hits an unforced error. It seems unrelated. I love Roger Federer, and I've never, ever thought of him in the word choking, but there are moments in the match where it is hard for me to argue someone who is going to make that claim. It's going to be hard for me to defend Roger. I'm not going to say the guy's choking. Well, I don't know what I'm going to say yet. As I relive these moments, I'll tell you what I think. Roger hits a great forehand return, getting out of the way of the body serve. The slice pulls Joker into the net. A well-struck backhand from Fed gets a very bad volley from Djokovic that sits up short. You remember this ball? He should have made this ball. One all with a chance to get a mini break after blowing a, a chance to get a mini break right before. Djokovic is pretty much helpless at the net. Fed gets that bad volley that sits up for the short forehand, and he misses what looks like a very easy forehand cross-court pass. Now, serving at 1-2, this is another moment that really killed Federer because he's about to go He's about to go on a four-point run. If he gets this one point, it's two all. And if he does the same thing, the four-point run, he's up. He's up 6-2. Four set points. You might blow two of them, but you don't blow four of them in a tie break. It's very rare. I doubt he does. And this is a moment where you definitely have no case if you want to argue that Federer chokes this moment away. I said it in the Patron Saint pod podcast on Sunday some of the shots Federer went for in the tie breaks, they were risky. They were they were brave. They were good ideas. They were the kind of shots where if it goes in, everyone talks about how genius he is. And if he misses, then he was pressing or he was choking or it's a poor decision. This is the thing. That, this is something that happens when you're Roger Federer. You're going for unbelievable, crazy shots on a regular basis in very tight moments. You have to do this without questioning, without fearing. And I don't think Roger Federer was afraid. Maybe, if we were going to say anything like that, he overthought it. He tried to be too fancy and overthought the strategy here in that half second you have to think before you, you go for your shot. A first serve wide from Fed to the backhand. This is from the ad court. 1-2, Fed serving. Joker lunges to his left. 
Roger runs around the cross-court backhand that comes to his backhand to hit what looks like it's going to be a big inside-in forehand up the line. I, I think I took a picture, put it on the screen if I have the screenshot. I try to take as many as I can so you can see the positioning of the players in some of these points. Since, of course, if you're new to the show, we can't use footage because Wimbledon will ban this video from YouTube before I can even post it. So Roger runs around the cross-court backhand, and it looks like he's might is probably going to go inside and up the line. Djokovic is so far out of position. At this moment, Roger knows, and this is what you should do with great movers who are very fast. Roger knows Djokovic is about to take off and run to that corner to cover. And what seems kind of brilliant, to me at least, and I, I think I do have this screenshot, put this here. Roger goes for an inside-out forehand, the other corner, where Djokovic is standing. But look at the screen. Djokovic doesn't recover as far into the court, and he split steps pretty close to the corner, almost like he guessed it is going to go there. That could be Craig O'Shawn SE brain game stuff there because they, they really go through the big data, and they're going to know that if Roger's over there, he only goes for an inside-in forehand maybe two out of ten times. The rest of the time, he's going to go big inside-out to attack the backhand, even if your Djokovic and your backhand is very, very good, maybe even better than his forehand. This would have been brilliant from Federer if he pulled it off. And you can see on the screenshot, we all know how Federer doesn't take his eye off the ball when he's hitting a forehand or any shot. At the point where he has to keep his head down, he doesn't see that Djokovic stays home and doesn't come back. The commentators say it's a mistake. He's too far out of position. It, it cost him too much uh, court space. It cost him too much real estate to give up all that ground to, to run around his backhand. But again, I think... He did this trying to hit behind Djokovic, thinking this was going to be a very easy winner as Djokovic is running away from the ball. Ironically, Roger, of course, survives this. The rally goes on. Roger misses on a a pretty aggressive backhand up the line, which he hit many very great backhand up the lines and big moments in this match. The irony in that is Roger probably should have just went with the backhand up the line in the first place. Would have done more damage. He could have come into the net, or he would have got a short forehand to go into the net on the next ball. At 1-3, now Federer is in danger after having after having three chances to win points. I don't want to say easy on the last point, but easy enough. Three unforced errors. Roger's in trouble. What does he do? The wide slider ace in the deuce court. Now Djokovic serves 3-2. Misses his first serve again. So far, Djokovic, in three points on his serve, has not hit a first serve in. Another reason why how in the world did Roger not win this tiebreak? Second serve, Roger moves Djokovic around very well, keeps him off balance, rips the one-hander up the line for a winner after using my play. Cross-court backhand from Joker off balance slightly. Roger knifes the slice down the line a little short. Djokovic moves in looking even more off balance, hits the forehand up. He's got to get so low that he has to shoot it up. It's short, sitting. Roger steps in, crushes it. This is an ideal situation. By the way, try to forget, ideal situation for Roger Federer hit the backhand up the line winner. At this point in this replay I'm watching on Tennis Channel, Jim Courier points out that both sides of Djokovic, forehand and backhand, two miles per hour slower off the ground on average. Now remember, on average, because plenty of balls he's getting to set up and hit like normal, but there's enough of these low, and this is, he, Courier says it, just like I said the day before the match, it was going to be a big factor. Federer is often forcing him to get down low and hit awkward balls with that low slice backhand. It's very effective here. So that would tell you if it's on average of all of his shots, including the ones where he doesn't have to get down low, Federer just hits a regular topspin ball and Djokovic belts it back. That would say that on the balls where Federer is slicing it, the speed would drop significantly more than two miles per hour and oftentimes sitting up and being shorter. Taking Djokovic, who hits one of the best balls of all time, so clean, so good, Federer was able to force him to hit balls that feel more like average players. At 3-all, Djokovic finally gets a first serve in. This goes wide. Federer hits a very good forehand cross court, but he's out of position. Djokovic hits the open court. Fed slices short. This was awesome here. Djokovic comes to net. Federer rips an 89, not choking, 89 mile an hour backhand up the line. Oh, sorry, forehand pass up the line. This is a much more difficult shot to pull off compared to the forehands that he missed when he could have got many breaks on Djokovic at both 1-0 and 1-1. 4-3, a first serve, excellent, wide, missed return, lunging, diving. It's a service winner from Roger Federer. He now leads 5-3. First serve for Federer, and this is his probably biggest mistake. At least this is the one they showed right away, saying this is when the momentum swings. 
Of course, this is the hit behind forehand cross court miss. It's an excellent wide serve. Joker is flying to his left to cover because the whole match, Federer would serve wide, forehand up the line, go to the net, cover the line, put the volley away, or get an overhead. It always worked. Of course, there are two big moments. I'm sure you can remember another one of them happening in the fifth set tiebreaker where Roger breaks this pattern. Again, not a choke. It's a great idea. If you're doing it all match, the tiebreaker, and if he makes it, everyone says he's brilliant, is the perfect time to hit behind. Instead of going up the line you like you do all the time throughout the match, hit behind as Djokovic runs there to cover. Djokovic can't stop. He moves great, but he ain't great enough to stop and come back and cover that. If you even just hit it, decent. It doesn't have to be a perfect shot. It just has to be pretty well struck and placed close enough, short enough, cross court. Federer pulls it wide. This unforced error was crucial. It would have gave him three set points. 4-5. Djokovic gets a first serve in. T. Roger leaps to his right, makes a decent forehand return. He gets a cross-court forehand and overhits an unforced error. I think he was just so thrilled to be back to neutral after such a great serve that he had to fight off. Pressure? A choke? I don't know. I don't really think so. I think he just got a little excited that he had a ball he could attack after being in a tough position. He overhits it. Five all. First serve, body, backhand side. This jams up the backhand right here. Federer does an excellent job. I think I have a picture. Put it on the screen. An excellent job to fight off a return right here. And I think I even... And and remember, one of the things Federer said in the press conference either before the semi or after the semifinal of Rafa, Roger said sometimes, and I'm shocked he said this in press, sometimes he won't serve at the body against his opponent just because he doesn't want to give them the idea to do it to him. As Roger gets older, I know he still moves incredible, but the one thing that's going to be hardest for him to deal with on return, especially because Roger stands so close to the baseline so that he can cut off your angles. If you hit a great serve, he can just step in and kind of block it back. We see him block the serve so well. The one thing that is hard to defend when you're in a position, it's not that Federer is like slow because he's old now or something, but if you're that tight to the baseline and it comes right at your body, Think of Rafa standing way far back. Body serve's got to be the least effective thing to do to Rafa. He doesn't even have to move hardly. One step to the left, two steps to the left, or to the right for Rafa. I mean, you're basically giving Rafa a forehand. A couple steps to the right, and he's going to crush a forehand if you serve his body when he's way back. But Roger's so tight to the baseline, there's very little time to react. Roger has to do this. But this case, he does a great job. In the handcuff zone, he manages to float the backhand block return all the way to the line. I think I have a screenshot. Put it. It's very close to the line. Eventually in the rally, Joker is baited into the net. But this is the forced error. Djokovic does an excellent job with this very low backhand. It's his better shot. He pokes it up the line. And we've seen this in another tie break. The same play. Maybe the third third set or the fifth. I can't remember. Roger just has to cover too much ground running to that forehand. To get to the passing shot, he tries to go up the line. It's so low when he gets there. He hit a decent shot from there, but Djokovic is so good on that backhand, he's able to hit a very good shot and force the air out of Roger. But you know what? We're on serve. 5-6. Roger, first serve. T, but not close enough to the T to guarantee success against the greatest returner of all time, Novak Djokovic. Djokovic able to hit a decent forehand return, but it's short. Roger steps in, smacks the forehand big inside out but with very little angle. He kind of hits it right to Djokovic. If this court's playing faster, maybe that works. But the court is slow enough to where someone like Djokovic is going to be able to get it back no matter what. It's almost better to create some angle and move him a little so maybe the next shot you can open up the court. Look how close to the baseline Roger is. This is a powerful position. But look what Joker can do from his uncomfortable position behind the baseline. He's so good everywhere. This is the brilliance of Djokovic. All tournament long, he's able to pin guys deep into the backhand corner. Roger fights that by still taking an inside-out forehand relatively early, but this is not the ball Roger expects after he jumped all over a a shorter return that he just crushed. But Roger will survive this. He isn't in bad shape, yet here's what we saw a lot of in the next tiebreakers. Unforced error, backhand cross court. Two four-point swings, back-to-back. Roger will only win four points in the third set tiebreak and only three in the final. Try to forget. 
All right, we're uh, we're running out of time for the show, but I really want to do this, so I'm going to try to power through. If we look at the first set stats in total, Roger Federer gets six out of six first serves in. He was 100. Again, if, if we could have looked at only that, we would say, well, clearly Roger wins the first set tiebreaker, getting 100% of his first serves in, but he only wins half, 50%, three out of six. Return points won, 33%. Second serve, there are no stats. He got all of his first serves in. Winners, five. Unforced errors, six. Forced error, the one thing Djokovic did, one. Add that up. That's all seven points that Djokovic won in that first set tiebreaker. All came from Roger Federer's unforced errors and one ball where Djokovic was in an uncomfortable position but was able to come up with a good enough shot that Federer really couldn't do anything with it despite getting there. Maybe he could could have got under it and tried to throw it up in the air for some crazy lob. Maybe that would have worked better. It's really hard. I, I I can't say he choked. All I can say is he had many chokes, miniature chokes, in those forehands on the first two serve points from Djokovic. Roger really should have been able to go after those shots. One he misses, it feels a little choky, yes. The other one, he just doesn't go for enough. He's too careful with it. Is that a choke when you're too careful, or is it just doing your best to battle nerves? What does choking even mean? I guess it's failing to battle your nerves, letting them get the best of you. Did the nerves get the best of Roger, or was he just a little too careful? We've seen many times Federer a little too careful with a forehand gets away with it against other people. Against Djokovic, you can't do it. Djokovic first serves in, 50%. First serve wins, 66. Second serve win 50. Not the greatest numbers, but they're okay, considering what Federer did. Return points won, 50. All three, three out of six, all three, Of those points that Djokovic won on return, unforced errors from Roger Federer. Winners, zero. Unforced errors, zero. The second set tiebreaker. Let's race through it. Zero, zero. Federer, first serve wide. A good return. A mishit forehand inside out but deep. He would have survived this. Standard cross-court backhand. What does Federer do? A badly missed unforced error. 1-0 Djokovic, first serve excellent near the tee. But a well-struck forehand return looks good to me. Roger does not challenge. It's called out. Put it on the screen. Roger looks to the chair, and the chair makes a motion like this. Put that on the screen. It's like half a foot out, according to the chair. To me, it's hard to see. I got a picture, I think, a screenshot. Look where the ball is. It it looks like it could have been out, but it's so close. It's really worth a challenge. And as you know, Federer made some frustration challenges throughout this match. I think Federer challenged one ball that was like 15 inches out. Challenge this one, Roger, next time. 2-0, Djokovic, a good first serve again, but Roger returns. It settles into a rally. They're even. They're neutral. Ironically, he hits several good, several good backhand cross-court shots. Like the first point, on a routine-looking cross-court backhand, he misses it wide, unforced error. So we're Federer down 3-0 in the third set tiebreaker, and they're all three unforced errors right away to start it. This is a guaranteed loss when you do this in a tiebreaker. You can't give your opponent those easy points. First serve up the tee, misses a little, but goes still good enough for Joker to miss the lunging forehand return service winner. It goes out. Federer, 1-3 serving. Second serve up the middle. Joker gets a solid return to the Federer backhand, but it's not really deep enough to be a problem for Federer. But a very bad backhand unforced error. Again, Djokovic serving 4-1. First serve, body jam. On the backhand side, Roger does a great job again to return this jammer. It's tight. And soon, Djokovic is in an uncomfortable position with a slice sharp and low to his forehand. Djokovic almost misses this ball, but does good to get it deep, spinny. It's slightly mishit. It lands very close to the line. It looks almost like it's going to go long the entire way, but it barely clips the line. This happens several times in a long rally where Joker is forced to hit awkward balls from low positions on both sides repeatedly. Eventually, a cross-court knife slice gets Joker very low and inside the court, but on his backhand side. This was the key. In my prediction video, I always said Federer's going to do really good to force Djokovic into uncomfortable low forehands. Now, I'm not saying he shouldn't have gone to the backhands. That low slice is going to be effective on both sides, but the forehand would be where it was most effective. This is designed to get Djokovic to hit up on the ball, make it sit short for for Federer to attack. But Djokovic belts it pretty flat, cross-court, very well struck, And this is a forced error, one of the key forced errors from Djokovic. Every tiebreaker, he had forced errors that were so important. Because Roger can't get there with enough time to do anything, and he slices it long. 
this is the point where they show the graphic. 70% of rallies over nine shots. Djokovic wins. 16 to 7 at this point. 5-1. Djokovic first serve wide. And another pretty good forehand return from Roger. Joker succeeds in getting Roger on the string, left to right, pulling him around like Djokovic loves to do. Roger senses this, hits a forehand cross court with so much pace and angle that Djokovic misses it cross court into the net. This is a forced error from Federer. 2-5. Federer serving. First serve near the tee. Joker pops it up. Federer flies in, swinging forehand volley winner. 3-5. Ace up the tee from Roger Federer. It's now 5-4. Pressure put back on Djokovic. Djokovic, or Federer does a beautiful job recovering. From this horrible nightmare of scenario he's created by missing, I think, all four unforced errors backhands. Djokovic serving. 15 to 20 ball bounces, I counted. I only couldn't get an exact number because they showed Federer for a little bit before they cut back to the camera view of Djokovic bouncing the ball. 5-4, Djokovic serving in this third set tiebreaker. 15 to 20 bounces the ball. He misses the serve. Second serve. 15 bounces of the ball. Federer chips the ball deep. It's awkward. Djokovic moves back into his backhand corner to hit inside out. And Federer goes for a drop shot. Is this a choke? Or is it poor decision making? I mean, if he makes it, again, it's genius. If he misses it, it's poor decision making. It's choking. I can't call it choking. I'm sorry, folks. Federer's drop shot just left of the line. He challenges. He should have challenged the 0-1 forehand return instead of this one. But hey, it's desperate times. 6-4, Djokovic serving. First serve. Roger chips it pretty short. Djokovic runs into the backhand corner. Another chip, but is playing into the Joker backhand again, and it's not very low. Joker's able to run the same play from the first set. The backhand bunt up the line, going away away from Federer. It's almost inside out. Roger just can't get to this ball with enough height to do anything. He misses the pass up the line. Another crucial forced error from Djokovic. Djokovic wins 7-4 in the third set. He leads two sets to one. Try to forget. Stats, Federer first serve in 80%. Again, very good. 75% win on first serve. Win on second serve, 0%. That was only one point. Return points, one. One out of six, 17%. Winners, three. Unforced errors, five. Forced errors, two. Djokovic, winners, zero. Unforced errors, zero. Uh, We don't have time to go through all the stats. Third set, fifth set, final set. Tiebreaker, the first in 152 years of Wimbledon history. And after this, we're getting out of here. I don't have time to go through Craig O'Shaughnessy. And a big thing he talked about was a lot of baseline rallies and not so much Federer coming to net. He said, ironically, Djokovic wins more at net in the tiebreakers total than Federer, which is really because Federer misses uh, easy passing shots and those unforced errors. That's what gave Djokovic the edge because Federer only comes to net like twice, I think, in all three tiebreakers. Federer was really good in this match about knowing when not to go to the net. Djokovic is too good to go to the net on anything. It has to be the perfect ball. And amazingly, Federer wins, what what was it, 54 out of 70 approaches to net? Federer was very good at the net considering how good Djokovic is at passing, moving, everything Djokovic does. Zero all, second serve after 12 bounces. It's 105 mile an hour wide in the corner. It's a great second serve, but Roger gets it back. A good rally, but eventually... Roger misses. Backhand. Unforced error. 0 1. Federer. First serve. 120 mile an hour bomb. One inch inside the tee. A great stretch return from Joker. Federer moves around and blasts a high risk, high reward forehand inside in winner. When I saw this point, I thought this tie break is going to be different. 1 all. Federer. Serve and volley on the slide. Wide slide serve from the deuce court. And again, this is where Roger tries to pick up a little half volley and direct it cross-court to hit behind Djokovic. Djokovic moving to cover the volley going into the open court, which most people would. If Roger makes the shot, he's brilliant. But he doesn't, and instead they say, is it choking? I can't call it choking, folks. He went for the right idea. Perfect time to change the pattern of what you have done all match long. Pull it the other way. Hit behind the incredible fast guy who can get to things. That's the way you beat fast people. Federer doesn't execute. This was the 15th serve and volley of the match for Roger Federer and only the second time he didn't win the point with the serve and volley. Amazing. 2-1. Djokovic hits a strong second serve deep. Roger Federer slice block return. Djokovic hammers the corner. Controlled aggression. Another thing Djokovic did very well in this in this uh, match. That's why he has zero unforced errors in three tie break sets. Because when he went for things, the targets were conservative enough to not be too risky, but he could still go after these balls and really hit them. This is another forced error winner from Djokovic. It's not a winner, 
but it was too good for Roger to really do anything with it. And it was, like I said, controlled, smart aggression where the odds of Djokovic missing are quite low, yet it's still a great shot that does damage. 3-1, Djokovic, a strong first serve wide. But Roger, as he does the whole match, finds a way to fight it off and get this ball deep cross court. It's on the line. Roger slices the backhand, but Joker gets low and balanced and strikes his backhand cross court very well. Roger, fighting for his life, barely gets there and hits it well enough with a topspin backhand cross court. He fights it off. It's amazing that he's able to do this. This is one of those balls, controlled aggression, that looks like another forced error from Djokovic that Roger just won't be able to do anything with. But he gets there in just enough time and is able to take that ball. It's already so low at this point and block this thing deep enough to where he'll have a chance. The Joker backhand up the line is anticipated by Fed. He gets there with time to put Joker on the run, but the pressure of the moment leads him to go unforced error, forehand, cross court. Is it a choke? I have a hard time saying this. I think it's another case of amazed that you made it to this point. We see it all the time in tennis. You make these crazy shots, you stay alive, and then the easiest ball where you have a chance to hurt you go for too much and you miss. 1-4, Federer serving. It's a second serve. It's a great point from Fed. He hits a ball on the line, a drop shot, and Joker falls to the ground. Although it's desperate at this point, they're going to change ends. It's 2-4. When you see Djokovic fall and hit his face and put his face in the dirt, you think maybe Roger can turn this around. 2-4, deep second serve kick near to T. Joker lunges and misses. It's a service winner. This was an excellent second serve from Roger Federer. 4-3, after all that, the pressure is back on Djokovic. First serve, short return middle. Joker steps in and hits his first winner of the match in a tiebreaker. It's not much different than the second match point that Roger Federer had when he served at 8-7. But Joker hits it deeper and more in the corner. Great controlled aggression here. Compare the picks. Take a look at them. They're pretty similar spots. Now, I almost call this an unforced error, though, from Federer because Djokovic didn't hit the ball a whole lot better than Federer. He did hit it better. But Federer split steps the wrong way, anticipating the wrong shot. It's kind of like when you ace yourself, which Federer did in this match. And I tweeted it, and somebody said, what does that mean? And uh, I can tell you it's something I do sometimes because I try to when, – sometimes when you get that ad serve – Second serve's coming. You just assume ad court is going to go to your backhand, especially if you're Federer. It happens all the time. And uh, this is something I try to do when I play tennis because it's just so much fun to, to replicate something Federer does. So when the serve comes, right before they strike it and they're looking up to see the ball, they can't see what you're doing, you move to your left. You kind of run away and you get ready to crunch a forehand up the line or cross court. Well, there was one point where, where Federer starts running to his left and Djokovic serves up the tee with the second serve. So Federer is basically running away from the ball and aces himself this point felt like that Roger Federer split steps away from where Djokovic hits the ball and he might have had a chance to do something with that ball but when you're split stepping the opposite direction anticipating the other way you really got no chance 5-3 Djokovic second serve very good wide to the forehand again and near the line Roger has a great return eventually Roger inside out forehand loses a little sting a little short not a terrible ball, but shorter. Djokovic is able to step in, clean winner, back in up the line, his second winner. 3-6, this one hurts the most. Second serve, Federer plays very well, gets an easy backhand right at the net, on top of it, about to hit an easy winner. Out is the call. They call out, Federer then misses the ball. Djokovic challenges, the ball is on the line. Umpire says replay the point. Djokovic complains, which is crazy. It was so obvious, like... The ball lands, Roger takes his racket back, and then there's a very loud out call. If that's not hindrance, distraction, whatever, I, I don't know what is. It really hurts because Roger, if they don't call it out, he, there's no way he misses this ball. And he at least gets to serve another point to get the 5-6 and force Djokovic to be under pressure to serve with just one more match point after blowing a couple of them. But they replay the point, second serve again. Roger steps around, and we'll all remember this. Just like in 2008, we remember the kind of short forehand. Roger steps in cross-court right in the top of the net. Rafa Nadal falls to his back. The cameras go crazy. There's flashes everywhere. It's so dark. I'll never forget that image. I'll never forget this image after the disappointment of having to replay the point that Roger had already won, basically. He steps around and hits an ultimate Federer forehand shank. 
Stats, first serve in, 40% for Fed. First serve win, 50% for Fed. 66 win on second. 0% return points won. 0 out of 5 return points won in that final tiebreaker. Winners, 3. Unforced errors, 4. Djokovic, 1 forced error, where he forced Federer into an error. Djokovic, first serve in, 40%. How do you not do something with that? First serve win, 100%. Second serve win, 100%. Return points won, 40%. 2 out of 5 winners, 2. Unforced errors, 0. And finally, let's do this and we'll get out of here. It's a freaking hour video. I told you it's going to be intense. 8-7, <clears throat> serve game for the match. Love all, wide serve, doesn't hit the mark as well. Perhaps this one moment, Federer feels the pressure knowing this could be the time it doesn't work. It doesn't work going forehand up the line after slicing wide on the serve. He did this play so much in the match. The serve, this time the serve wasn't as good. I think Federer knows. I think Federer feels like maybe he didn't do enough. Forehand, unforced error, long from Roger, a dumb challenge, it's one foot long. Love 15, in the rally, Roger miss hits a cross-court forehand, and this draws an error from the Djokovic forehand cross-court, unforced error on Joker, Mirka seen at this moment, praying. 15 all, a sneaky ace up the tee that slides from the outside with a little slice on it. 30-15, a flat ace up the tee, fans seen in the crowd holding up one finger, one more point. 40-15, Roger goes for the third ace up the tee, but misses after it hits the net. I remember thinking, don't go wide, like at the U.S. Open, where he serves first serve wide, and Djokovic rips it cross court. I think Roger thought the same thing. This is a big thing I wonder. Did it enter Roger's mind when he was serving 40-15 with match points that I've been here before and still lost? Be careful, Roger. Something like that. It, it could have been a positive thought, like I've been here before, this time we'll make it right. Did it go through his mind in any way at all? I feel like it had to have, but I don't know. Is it a choke after that goes through his mind? Second serve is fine. It gets a ball up the middle despite being well struck. He steps around with a very makeable shot, hits inside out forehand wide, unforced error. Is that a choke? It's nervy. 40-30, first serve misses the tee, but it isn't bad. It goes in, it's just not close enough to guarantee something super short or the ball doesn't come back. But the return, take a look. This will haunt me forever. The return is short enough for Federer to get a forehand to do something. He hits it too short, without enough angle, approaches the net, covers the line, does everything right other than the approach shot is not very good. And Djokovic hits the passing shot that we will all remember forever. Deuce, a second serve that is okay. Roger in a neutral rally. Neutral rally until his second backhand is mishit. Sits in the middle of the court. This is basically an unforced error. He might as well have shanked it wide like he did so many times in tiebreakers. Joker comes up, hits cross-court forehand deep in the corner. And this, again, like the tiebreaks, is controlled aggression. A ball that is a forced error because it's too wide and low for Roger to do anything when he gets there being so low. He misses, of course. Add out. First serve misses the tee a bit. And it's short. The return is short enough to do something. Roger hits a fairly aggressive forehand cross-court. Joker hits a great forehand cross court back that is very safe, well struck, controlled aggression. Again, Roger should make it, but he hits a forehand unforced error into the net, trying to cross court rally ball it. This first forehand is similar to the forehand he missed in the first set tiebreaker. It was a chance to hurt Djokovic, but he was too careful. It's a bit mishit. It allows Djokovic to do a pace injection with the next ball. It's kind of a forced error in that regard. There you go. Just shy of an hour. We have gone through every single point of the tiebreakers. And then if you're a Joker fan, congratulations to you. I know it's a great feeling when your favorite player sneaks out a win. If you're a Raw fan, I don't know what the heck you're thinking because this was uh, some crazy stuff. And if you're a Roger Federer fan, now we went through it. Now we understand. I don't feel like Roger Federer choked, but I feel like he was too careful in big moments. The only thing I can say to you is what Roger Federer said. Try to forget. See ya!